Hi there! Welcome to this video on mastering Notchell C in Scratch. In this video we'll show you how to export any kind of content and encode it in the Notchell C codec in different color spaces and resolutions. If you want to encode to Notchell C, you'll need a special license to unlock the Notchell C encoder in Scratch. To obtain this license, head over to the Scratch product page on our website, open the Scratch and Notchell C workflow accordion and hit the Try Notchell C button. Let's start. Here we have a timeline of not only notch blocks that we animated and graded, but actually mixed footage of all kinds of formats like RedRaw, EveryRaw and others. As you can tell by looking at the formats dropdown in our import menu, Scratch supports quite a range of source formats, including ProRes RAW, Notch LC and more. We have confirmed this timeline through an XML, graded it, animated our notch blocks and now have it ready to export in different resolutions and color spaces, according to client spec. This is all done in the render tab. Scratch features a highly flexible node tree to build complex output templates with. Here we have the main output node. This represents our timeline in terms of frame rate, resolution and aspect and by changing those parameters here we change them for our timeline. As you can see, the color space and EUTF of our main output node are set to Rec 709 and Gamma 2.4. This is what all shots in the timeline will now be unified to. Now let's assume the client asks for three different kinds of exports. One notch LC, mastered natively in Rec 709. Another Notch LC mastered in P3D65 and PQHDR. And one smaller sized H264 with a metadata burn in. Let's first take care of the native Rec709 output. We just have to add the Notch LC encoder node right after the main output node. Done! Let's also label this node a bit nicer and call it Notch LC. Each node has its own settings in the Format Settings tab here. In the case of a Notch LC node, we can set the quality of the encoder as well as decide whether we want to include an alpha channel or not. Also, the number and layout of our audio channels can be decided on. Next, for the output in P3D65, we first add a transformer node and set that to P3D65 and PQHDR. Since we disabled color management in our project settings, the apply button next to those dropdowns will be disabled by default. However, to invoke an actual transform we need to enable it. Otherwise these two dropdowns will only be flags but not change any pixels. Now let's attach the Notch LC encoder behind the transformer node. Let's also simplify the node name here. The pipeline now looks like this. The main output node outputs Rec 709, the transformer node converts it to P3D65 and feeds that into the Notch LC encoder node. It's worth noting that Scratch will also write all the color space and transfer function information into the resulting QuickTime file for other applications to pick up on. Also, Scratch is able to export Notch LC up to a size of 16K by 16K at any frame rate. Lastly, our H264 with the metadata burn-in for review purposes. Let's select the main output node again add a transformer node and set that to 1280 by 720. Right now this would result in a simple center crop, so let's go to the format settings tab and set the input sizing to fit width. Done. Now our content is scaled down from 1080 x 1920 to 1280 x 720. Next let's add a burn-in node behind the transformer node. The burn-in node has a bunch of tabs which allow us to configure it. However, in the case of the burn-in node, this should really be done from inside the player, looking at the actual image. To do so, simply double-click the burn-in node. We are now back in color effects, but with the burn-in node which spans across the entire timeline. Here in the node menu, appropriately labeled burn-in, we can set it all up. Let's first go to the guides tab, enable a guide and blanking, in order to get us some space for the metadata burn-in. In the text tab we can create text boxes and fill them with metadata from this drop down here. Let's say we want the current date in here, so I'll type date and add the corresponding metadata item from the drop down. Next I'll create a new text box, also place it at the top, 
but center the text and add the record timecode. New text box. Let's fill this one with the project name and the source clip name, which will display each underlying clip's source name. And to make things a bit more secure, let's also add a watermark. This can easily be done on any node, not only the burn in. Open up the layer stack, add a layer, and go to the fill map menu. Right click to import the watermark, in our case a TIFF sequence with alpha channel, and position it in the lower right corner. Let's scale it up a little. And finally, dial down the layer opacity here in the canvas menu. Nice. Back to the render tab. Let's add the H264 encoder node right behind the burn in node and label it H264 Review. Again, in the format settings tab of the H264 encoder node, we can configure all the specifics of the encoder. Scratch's H264 encoder is quite powerful. It achieves stunning quality at super low file sizes. Now the last thing before we can add those three encoder nodes to the render queue is to set the export file name. You can do that by clicking the set button here. Here we have the metadata items again, but conveniently with a usage description for each one of them. Right now the output file name consists out of the output node's name and the file extension we want to render. Let's make this a little bit more sophisticated. We could type in anything here but we can also make use of the metadata hash codes to dynamically configure our file name. We can combine several codes by separating them with underscores. If we insert slashes, we can even create a complete output folder structure purely based on clip metadata. More importantly though, if we want to render the timeline not as one big piece, but as separate clips again, we would also decide this by using a file mask that results in a different file name for each exported clip. If we for instance insert sname for source name, then the output file name will basically change with each clip that's being rendered, and this way force Scratch to start a new file with every clip rendered. This way the timeline can be rendered to separate clips. Pretty cool. In our case however we just want the timeline name, the date, Resolution, color space, and the node name in the file name. We can save this combo as a template here so we can easily recall it on the other two encoder nodes. Now that we have set up our tree, let's assume we want to save the entire tree for future use. Easy. Select the main output node and down here type in a name for the template and hit save. We can now create a new timeline and apply the output tree from this list here. We can even define this output template as the default for any new timeline created here in the project settings. Back to our project. We can now either select each node and hit the render node button or we can add them to our render queue one by one and then fire off the render queue. Once Scratch starts rendering, we can close the render queue and work on other timelines. The render will continue in the background. That's it for Notch LC exporting out of Scratch. I hope this tutorial was useful to you and see you next time. Bye!